Mike, turn your games down. Hi, I'm with another spooky movie episode of Games My Mom Found. I am Mike Everton, and who has the functional families with me tonight? <laughs> oh, everybody does. I am Tiffany Alberton, and that's it, yep. Hi there, sitting over here with my face on my face, it's Ken Insanity. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Bill Tucker from A Gamer Looks of 40, and... <laughs> I can't do that. You can't do that? I've been doing that since I was a kid. I'm Maybe so I happy can. I can... Okay, I, I, I can do it. your tongue. <laughs> yeah, I can do it too. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I can't snap, I can't snap, though. Yeah, yeah, I can't, can't do snap. <laughs> Hopefully, this picks up on our on our radio, but no, we'll see. Sure, it's fine. It's fine. Turn it up, y'all. <laughs> Turn it up. We're clicking our tongues. <laughs> it's what you come here for. <laughs> that was a lot funnier in my head three days ago than it was <laughs> two seconds ago. Just so you know, that that was a riot when I thought. I can of tell it. you, it's going to be in the episode. Okay, as long as everybody just chuckles. I hope everyone had a good one. At that expense. <laughs> wow. And Ken, what, uh, what crap did you make me watch this time? <laughs> All right. First oh, off, oh, oh, um, oh. it's oh. not crap. Uh, no, it's second not. off. Today we're talking about Hereditary from 2018, directed by Ari Aster, and also written by Ari Aster, if that matters. It does. Does it? Sure does. And we've now we are going to be we are covering the second of the three movies he's directed on the yeah. show. Not in the right order, but. Midsummer, he did Midsummer too. Oh, after right. this, I knew there was, which is what led to us doing this, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I tried to get you to do this first. No, I don't know. Would that would that have helped? I don't. No. Think so. No. I don't think so. <laughs> I have become I more like I am. He we, probably would have been like, we're absolutely not doing that. See, Midsummer had Florence, so that was like I was like I was in. I was like I wanted to okay. see Florence. Oh. This did not have anyone that I was like <laughs> I want to see them. Really. But it was Good Not a Gabriel P- P- uh, Pine Pern Pern, right? Pern Pern. Gabriel Pern. Not Gabriel. Not Pern a Pern pretty Pern? woman that was in the Black actor. Widow movie. No, he's a very good actor, but he wasn't the pretty woman in the Black Widow movie. That was why I wanted to see Florence. I mean, I enjoyed. I mean, that's a good film. I mean, this she's is the wrong pretty woman in the Black Widow movie <laughs> for me. <laughs> no, this is a good film. I not my kind of film, but it's not a bad film. I, not an I, Anne Dowd fan. Mm-hmm. So I went in this completely blind, Ken. I didn't watch <laughs> a trailer. Me too. I didn't read Good. nothing. I'm like, we're just gonna sit down and watch this film. And I was like, oh, me too. And that's how I watched it too. Oh, like oh. I saw the teaser, and then I went to go see it in theaters. After I saw it, I immediately wanted to go see it again. Almost oh. bought tickets for the show immediately after the one I just sat through. <laughs> Bill, what about you? What's your history? Uh, I did not see this theatrically. I saw this I mean, maybe a couple years ago. Probably around, when did Midsummer come out? Because that came out two, wow. What was that a couple years ago at this point? 20, 2019, right before 2019. 2019. Okay, so so I guess I probably saw maybe, maybe I guess that was around pandemic probably. I don't remember exactly when I saw it, but I remember being enthralled and terrified. And and I and I th- and I have not seen it since. So this is my my second viewing, and it's 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 great. I'm so glad I saw it a second time. And Ken, I really want to watch this like right after. I'm like, okay, I've seen it again. I need to watch this again. I really wanted to have that exact same thing you had, where I need to see this again because there's so much in here that yes. the initial shock of everything happening really can hit you hard. So I, like, it's kind of like Under the Skin, where it really does warrant <laughs> and reward a second and third viewing. It really does. Oh. This one really does. This one really rewards a second oh. viewing. And I'm sure we're going to get into that. Yes, because yes, 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 yes. Oh boy. It just it just it just reads different. It just totally reads different when all the that. scares There's... and the shock is gone. That you know, and it's now you can gone. like now you can just like dig into the meat of what this movie's doing. This is great. And I gotta ask, since you guys have done Midsummer, which do you prefer? Midsummer easy, unfortunately. And I don't prefer either, but Midsummer. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I can't decide. I was talking in a group about this, and I cannot decide, to be honest. I mean, one had sunlight and cultists. This had cultists and beheadings in the darkness. So. Mm. How do you know there wasn't beheadings and we just didn't see it? We didn't see it. That's the part that I'm concerned about. I don't care what the hell's going on in the background. <laughs> I, mean, I care I'm about I'm pretty sure there I'd was seen. beheadings in this work, and oh. we just didn't see it. That's fine. And that's okay. <laughs> what about you, Ken? I'm curious. Honestly, this one. I, I do, too. I agree. I like this better. <laughs> like, <laughs> I agree. <laughs> I have... I've watched Midsummer probably a good half dozen times now. I have watched this one probably over a dozen times. I am I, I'm I very see. much a big fan of everything in this movie. It has so much going for it. And it's one of the best 
feature length directorial debuts I've ever seen. Yeah, I can't. I'm trying to think of someone that's. I mean, you, yeah, it's up there. It's way up there. Uh, mm, there is Take- one that beats it, but I'm not going to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh oh. Oh. No, Bill, we already talked about it. Today. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah. Okay, we shan't be talking about that. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know what you're Are we saying the same thing? Okay. Yeah. Sorry, audience. Uh, so Ken and I had our own side conversation uh, about movies that would break. Because I'm not oh, there. Yeah. I was positing. Are you I was really not going to tell have... me this is not okay? No. No, we're not, not going to tell you. Oh, nope. you were so rude. Because you would try to convince guess... me to do it. Yeah, you're right. Yep. And they know not that. Only I'm that, a sucker for you, by the way. But my choices in particular, you would judge me for. Who, me? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I judge yeah. you guys for everything. What's the difference? <laughs> you, yeah. Mike, Bill already knows, the listening audience they would judge me, and I don't need it. I'm not here for that. Oh, it's fine. Hey, I, I don't need to watch. I already got a hundred random horror movies that are coming up on that poster. Once I finally, once we're, we're done with start. October, we're gonna start it. October, we're gonna start, and that's gonna be fun. So that's, oh, that's gonna be so much fun, and it will I be that. recorded about too. So of course, <laughs> if I agree, it's not part of the show. I agree with you, Ken. I like this better. I, I really do. I feel like there's more to chew on with this one. And again, it's that repeated viewing. I, I was actually bummed out today when I actually went to maybe scan through it again and my rental had expired. I'm like, oh, I'm not going to pay another $4 for this. No, I, YouTube. No. But this is, I would buy this though. I would actually buy this. No, no question. I, I, but not I digitally because I don't want my kids to like, ooh, <laughs> what's that <laughs> button on the TV? <laughs> no, I want that to happen. Yeah, they won't. Uh, yeah, this is not a movie you want to see. Would your kids try to? The cover looks really scary. <laughs> I could see my son doing it. I don't know. Really? Maybe not. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I'll misclick regret perhaps. That decision. He'd regret that super fast. <laughs> yeah, he'll, 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 he'll teach him. <laughs> you know what? Don't click it's, on things. It's a You're lesson that needs lesson to be learned easy. sometimes. You know, I'm a, I'm, I'm a, I have a, a few things I'm going to say later on, but I'm a big believer that the horrifying things that you experience in life should be discovered. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, you're, you're, oh, you're going to show your kids horror movies? I'm like, no, I'm going to let him discover horror movies because that'll be more for him. It'll be his personal terror. And like, I don't know. I think the stuff I I discovered as a kid and as a, as a young person, that was the stuff I remember. I don't remember when my – I do remember my dad took me to see Nightmare Before Christmas. I was scared. <laughs> but, <laughs> I, but I don't know. You know what I mean, Ken? Like if you, if you discover it yourself, it's cooler for you. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, well, that's how I discovered Creepshow. I right. shouldn't have been watching it. I did. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, fast forward to, you know, many years later, it is still my favorite movie of all time. I have a creep show tattoo. I've spent many dollars on creep show things like <laughs> discover things are better. Yeah. So I would I would love for my son, just like I would really can't wait to introduce my son to Back to the Future and Ghostbusters and Jurassic Park. I am really looking forward to him when he's like 25, 26, being like, Dad, you ever see this thing called hereditary? And I'll be like, oh, <laughs> Oh, my son. Let's have a seat. Have a seat. Let us talk <laughs> about this you movie. Listen to this podcast, <laughs> Yeah, right. Yeah, here. Let me, let me point you first to this podcast. And uh, you can, I should actually use this podcast as just like a compendium for all the things I don't want to talk about. <laughs> hey, feel free. Feel free. I feel like, listen, I can't talk about Bioshock Infinite again. Here's a three-hour episode. All about you are it. always welcome to plug this show. Well, however go, you go want. right ahead. Here it is. Do you want to tune in it? to Games with Mom Found After Dark, where we tell you how babies are made? <laughs> oh, I'm gonna pass on that one. That's Mike's job. Uh, okay. So, <laughs> patron only. Uh, patron yeah, only. I mean, we we talked about it. I don't know if it, not not that part of it, but like making something patron only. But we'll see. <laughs> see what the new year brings. This so this movie was just very like it starts off strange too. I mean. I'm used to movies with text, usually scrolling text that tell me how the empire is evil, not an obituary. <laughs> so that kind of, I was like, okay. I was, I had to have Mike pause it because I'm not a fast reader. <laughs> Mike pause it. I don't want to miss it. It, it. it was obituary. I was like, oh. <laughs> and and starting this movie with an obituary really is the best way to start it because it kind of puts you in that mindset of loss. Mm-hmm. Put me in the mindset right of away. confused. <laughs> Fair enough. So I, I, cause again, I had no idea this movie was about, I only knew the only thing that you said to me before this was pay attention. Yep. Which I did do this time, actually. Yeah. Did, was the sound on? Please tell me you had the sound on. Yeah, okay. The song was on. Subtitles okay. were on too, obviously. Okay. Cause the sound. Oh, the score in this movie. It's just good. Was it me? And I, I, and I was listening to it again, had the headphones on this time around and I, 
a lot of the scenes that seem very still still have almost like this thumbing like drone very softly. Mm-hmm. I don't is that is that an accurate statement? Because I kept pausing, like, are my headphones screwed up or is there this low? So even when there's nothing going on, there's still this audible dread, this audible unsettling drone going on. Oh, so good. <laughs> I love it's pretty... when it has music like that. It's like the best thing because then it slowly builds it up at the same time you almost don't realize it because sometimes you don't hear it, but it's there. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that I read this movie has like 83 minutes worth of film score. Ooh, so crazy. Which that's, is insane. That's ba- That's insanity. There's a lot of quiet moments in this movie. Yeah. Of people not talking, of just things happening, and you just watching this family life just go to shit. You have to watch your expression. Oh, yeah. The actress who played the mother, who I didn't um, even know who the name was. Man, she deserves some sort of oh, award. Oh, Tony Collette? She does an amazing job in this movie. Uh, Tony Collette deserves all the awards for this and oh got snubbed God. by everything. Why? She does, did this movie get any awards? No, Not really. I don't think so. Oh, that's sad. Horror movies get snubbed all the time. Yeah. So Every the comic time. book movies. Oh, shut up. Who cares about your comic book movies? <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure Avengers Endgame won an award, won an Oscar. Yeah, and Black Panther did too, but yeah, Black still. Black Panther definitely did. More of them have deserved it. Far far from home, or No Way Home deserved an award just for being so amazing. But <sighs> That doesn't win you an award, no, I, maybe. <laughs> that movie's great. I just need it. But so it looks like this. Award. Like it won a lot of smaller awards. I mean, it actually cleaned up at the uh, Fangoria Chainsaw Awards in 2019. Sure did. Oh. Sure did. But I mean, that's uh, probably more the audience for this. Oscars are usually stupid yeah. too. Like they you, they like their movies that are like, oh, you're about you're about Hollywood. Oh, here have all the Oscars. And Tony Collette did win for uh, best actress at the Chicago Film Critics Association Awards. Yes, yes, yes. Of course, they did. But we have, we have people of distinction and taste. Yes, 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 yes. yes, yes. She, we should do a whole show. Ken and I need to do like an entire, just like a short mini-sode of us going, oh, yes, 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 and just <laughs> pontificate about something mm-hmm. esoteric and strange. I like but, that know, idea. I think we should. That'd be a lot of fun. But only for like 20 minutes. We could not do this for two hours. We, there was no, <laughs> we couldn't. We could not keep it going for You're 20 hours. Do a whole cool episode like that. I'll pass. You do that with us. <laughs> <laughs> but I was I was gonna say, but the so if this movie came out in 2018, it would have been uh, eligible for the 2019 Oscars, right? Yeah. So the the winner of actress in the leading role, the the nominees for actress in the leading role in the 2019 Oscars was Olivia Coleman, who ended up winning for The Favorite. It's a movie I like. I like The Favorite. I'm That's a big fair. fan of that director. Not also nominated. Nominated. Nominated was Yelitsa Aparicio Roma. I think it was that Netflix movie I never saw. Yeah, yeah, that was. Um, yeah. Oh God, who directed that? Oh, I don't remember off the top of my head. I don't either. Uh, Glenn Close, the Glenn Close in the Wife, which I did not see. Lady Gaga in A Star Is Born. She was nominated. And Melissa McCarthy, the wonderful Melissa McCarthy in Can You Ever Forgive Me. All five of these actresses are smoked by Tony Collette. So not even right? in the same ballpark. Not even playing the same game. All of them. Yeah. No offense, Glenn Close. Great, <laughs> but you're not Tony totally Collette staring at your s- 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 screen. Oh, God. We'll get to, we'll get into the beef right beat, I think. But there's one scene in particular that, and I think you, I don't know if you guys will have the same opinion. There's one moment in particular that would cement it for me if I was an Oscar voter. I'll we'll go through it. We I'll I think put I know it exactly out. What you're talking about, uh, and you may not. It may be surprising to you. Oh, I know the moment for me. But are we gonna go over the plot, or do we already do that? Oh, no, we, we did mention the plot. That. Ken, we that's should. You. Keith, that's Come your on. job. Call me Keith again. <laughs> she will, don't worry. See what happens. <laughs> this happened because you called me Keith. Do you <laughs> want to push it? She you. likes horror movies, so yes, yeah, she does. <laughs> so basically, this movie follows the Graham family and their cycle of mourning after their the mother slash grandmother passes away. That family includes uh, husband Steve, 16-year-old Peter, and 13-year-old Charlie. Fortunately, uh, a lot of bad things happen, and uh, oh boy, a lot of bad things happen. And <laughs> oh God, yes. <laughs> oh boy. that free will is a lark. <laughs> In this movie, it is. But we're Hold gonna again. we're gonna get into the specifics here. <laughs> I mean, the way this movie opens up, even after the obituary, like you see the first thing you see is like a dollhouse and then it zooms in on the house and then it shows the father just walking around 
getting wearing putting on a suit, getting ready for the getting ready for the funeral, and I was just like, this is odd. <laughs> oh man, the the miniature work in this movie, like oh, it's it's yeah. just art, like miniature art. But they shot the interiors of the house on the soundstage so they could get the cutaways for mm-hmm. the rooms like that. That's what I heard to, on YouTube. Yeah, like it's on YouTube. The the amount of work that went into this movie is very amazing. Astounding. It really is astounding. Yeah. And again, it gives it, it gives it that great framework. And of course, it's going to tie in all thematically with the idea of the dollhouse and the things that are going on inside of it. But yeah, the opening is very effective. I love that long pull into, you know, again, that the, the, the dollhouse and then the father walks in to get his son ready for the funeral. And at the very outset of this movie, you know, things aren't OK. Now I like to say how movies like a movie should tell you what it is right up front. Yeah, and to a certain extent, you know, we like subverting expectations and surprises. This movie tells you exactly what it is right up front. Within the first five minutes, if you're not here <laughs> for sadness and despair, then I don't That's know. Movie. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. A star is born is next door, I guess, evidently. You can watch Lady Gaga <laughs> sing to a handsome person. I don't know. Yeah, because I mean, that's not a happy movie either. Pretty <laughs> quickly, when you have the funeral moment, and she's you know giving doing the God, what the hell is that called? You know, the eulogy. eulogy, eulogy, and she's eulogy. saying how terrible her mother was and stuff. Almost it seemed like like it wasn't a very like oh, and she was loved by all. And nope, I was just like, this is interesting eulogy. <laughs> Did she write this? <laughs> like, yeah, well, her mother deserved it. So as you find out, but. Uh... Yeah. No good. I mean, I did realize right away, like when they when they zoom in on her body and you see the necklace and I saw that symbol and I picked up on that symbol shortly after this when the Annie's wearing. This. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. And I also saw how there's when you see the telephone pole that plays later, the, the symbol is carved on there, too. Like you do yeah. see it pretty quickly in different places. You will see that symbol a lot in this movie. Yeah, it's and uh, fun thing about that is that actually is the uh, demonic sigil for payment. I was going to ask you if that was straight really? from the okay. lesser key of Solomon. Oh, interesting. I like lightly that. modified. So I wonder that, if they you know, had to do it. I wonder if they had to like slightly modify. modify it. They slightly modified it to avoid the bad luck, which can go along with using those types of actual symbols in movies. The demons. <laughs> yeah. I mean, ask the omen how that worked out for them. Not very well. Yeah. Worked out badly for the omen. Uh, yeah. Great movie, but man, there's a lot of bad shit that happens to people that involved involved in making that movie. Woo, that's a story. But, but this this movie did its research into like things like the Lesser Key of Solomon, like uh, Pseudomonarchia Demonium, those types of books. Don't ask me how I know those types of books. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I'm not sure how I want to know. So <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. I was I was wondering about that. I was going to ask you about that when we were recording, if it was something that was based in myth and stuff or something that they just created for this movie. I figured it was more myth and that that's yeah. cool. Well, you know, myth to some spiritual truth to others. Mm-hmm. I was say, it depends on you <laughs> yeah, I know. I, yeah. <laughs> There's people that strongly believe it. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, demons and to some angels to others, right? Exactly. Sure. Exactly. Dogs, but, um, dogs, whatever. At the funeral, you also see a bunch of people, and it focuses on some creepy individuals. Creepy blonde guy in the I corner. did not <laughs> no, pay attention to the other random people mm-hmm. in there. I was paying attention to the movie, but it, nothing. It's, it's something I think I need to see a second time. Like, I'm not going to. That but creepy blonde yeah, no, You have to. You really need to. It's not happening. I oh, watched that... a YouTube video that reviewed the movie and explained stuff. That's about as far as I'm going. Man, that creepy blonde guy. It just, that creepy that, blonde guy just like sneering at her. I was like, Ugh. That smile haunts me. Know, and that's right? a really challenging one. That's a toughie. <laughs> that is a toughie. <laughs> I'm like, why yeah. smiling at a few Because he knows what's happening. And stop looking at that little girl like that. He's like, oh, that's my God over there. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> well, see, that that's the thing, though. That is very much explained. Also, during the funeral, we get our first appearance of Chekhov's nut allergy. Oh, yeah. Chekhov's nut allergy. <laughs> Because we find out that Charlie has a very severe allergy they make to they that nuts. They introduce that very early, so you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it, it stuck in my brain too. But when when it actually goes down later on in the movie, I I didn't make the connection until probably around when the kid died. Like I I think I made the connection right when the director wanted me to. Yeah. I didn't make it when she they were cutting up the hazelnuts and making no. making a cake. I, I didn't, didn't think anything either. of it. And uh, and one thing I want to say. Yeah, and the one thing I do want to say about um, Tony Collette, her first, this little kind of uh, her eulogy, a lot of this movie, of course, deals with loss and grief, right? I mean, that's 
big headline on it, right? Loss, grief, and that's kind of like the overarching theme. And then, of course, we're going to talk about the hereditary stuff. But the her eulogy really strikes me as somebody who has to be there and has to say things they don't mean because yeah. there's certain societal expectations of how you should behave at a funeral. Mm-hmm. Like, and, and she is trying really hard to fit that mold when she genuinely doesn't feel it it's because I think societally, we like to put grief in a box and is, oh, this is how grief is supposed to look for you. And it's not how it is. Some people don't grieve for months and months after, right? Or maybe they don't at all. Maybe they, it's, there's, there's lots of layers to it and not to get too personal, but, but I, when I see like these kind of funeral scenes, my, my dad passed when I was 17. So I know what it's like to be in those receiving lines and in, to be on those podiums. And so when I see someone per- portraying that in a, in a way where I felt when, when during my dad's funerals, how I felt, I felt, I didn't feel like I was supposed to feel like I, I all I felt was like, I just want to get out of here. <laughs> I just got to get out of here. I'm tired of people. I don't know. I love this. The, her opening line, which was, I'm surprised that all the people that are all the people that are here, I don't recognize or have never seen before. That is so accurate. People come out of the woodwork for funerals, y'all. I'm just telling you, like, who are these people? Why weren't you here (laughs) for years and years? So anyway, so just from the very drop of this movie, I'm in because the way I'm reading that is like, yeah, you're just trying to fit a box that you don't want to be in. Yeah, really, really powerful stuff. I mean, also the reason why she didn't know who they were because she didn't realize that her mother was part of a cult. (laughs) So, you know, people got secrets. <laughs> it does a good job of, of, of this movie does a very good job very quickly of making you un, uneasy. Like when you're watching her painting the miniatures. I mean, I thought I found that uneasy, too, for some reason. I don't know why, but apparently I didn't like Little Furniture. <laughs> it, was, Small. it was it wasn't the fact that it depicted disturbing. Well, that didn't help it life. either. It was a little. Furniture. I don't know. I really don't like Little Furniture very much. I don't know. I didn't like miniatures. I. I really have certain two fears of things. Like I don't really like a lot of little miniature stuff where something could move that you didn't move. And I really don't <laughs> like mirrors. To so this day, I don't like to look in mirrors that much. So when the part later on, <laughs> right? when, he's, when the reflection's looking at him and, it, and it's smiling and he's not smiling, I was like, nope. Yeah, that was bad. I do not. That's where you checked out? <laughs> yeah, be, yeah, that was, yeah, I don't like That's mirrors. That's where you checked out. <laughs> if I had my way, there'd be no mirrors in this house. Well, I'd not have my way. That's so but funny. I just don't like mirrors. Well, I'm sorry. I have to beautify myself every day. So. I just don't look in mirrors that often. If you ever know, pay attention, you'll see I don't look in mirrors that often. You brush your teeth every day and look in the mirror. I don't look in the mirror. Yes, you do. So I don't have to look at my video, phone. I'm going to video. I look at my phone that's playing a video down below me, not in the mirror. <laughs> All right, everybody, tune in yeah. soon when we're going to be covering mirrors starring Keeper Sutherland. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't know. Uh, it's, it's all because of the st- when I was in elementary school, my friend told me some ghost story, but I'm pretty sure it was the plot of Poltergeist at this point. No, Poltergeist. He told me the plot of that, but didn't tell me it was a movie. Yes. I know. I'm not saying it right. But that he told me that plot, and then it got me all wor- not liking mirrors. But he also didn't tell me it was a movie plot. He told me it was a true story. urban legend. Yeah, I know. But also, my friend was an asshole. So there's that, too. All your friends were assholes. Yes. And then early, right after this, when you see her painting the miniatures, you 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 also have Charlie ends up seeing a ghost. Or does she see the light? Is it just the light of, which I, I know now is Paymon, or Pi, whatever the hell his name is? The re- yeah, that's Paymon. I found out later. Through YouTube? Yes. <laughs> Not your own deductions no. through YouTube? This is how I watch movies like this. You watch it once, <laughs> then you go look up a YouTube video that explains it. see what you missed. Yeah. I don't think there's anything really wrong with that, to be honest with you. No, it's actually there's fine. Not. Yeah, I think it's, yeah, I no, think it's not, good. I, yeah, I think it's good to encourage it, you to. I watched to it, it twice, and then I watched a video to make sure I didn't miss anything. And I don't think I, I the only thing I missed was the dog got killed. Why? Well, that's okay to miss. I didn't, like, I didn't see them chopping up the nuts when you see that. Like, I just saw when she eats the cake and she's having, I'm like, oh, she had a nut reaction. Like, I knew what, what it was, but I didn't notice them chopping up nuts. You knew what it was when I told you? No, I mean, I start seeing her choking, and she have an allergic reaction. They also, early in the movie, established she's allergic to nuts, so I put two and two together pretty quickly. Yeah, and, like, I, mm, the allergy stuff really hits me because I'm very allergic to bees. Ooh. Ooh. To the point where I have to carry an EpiPen. So any kind of anaphylactic reaction like this bothers me because I've gone through that quite a few times. And, like, I, I know the feeling that, She's trying to describe when she's having that reaction. And I just, I, the first time I saw this, I was squirming in the theater seat. I was very uncomfortable. That makes sense. Because it's something, you know, that you've gone through. Ugh. Yeah, it was, oh boy. But after the funeral, 
we, you know, people are going about their lives and we get to a point where Peter is, well, he's trying to get some and he wants to go to a party. <laughs> it happens. Mm-hmm. And uh, his mom, Annie, vi- well, this is way later. That's like a week, but isn't it? Oh, wait, no. Before we get there, we did. I wanted to touch on something when you saw the light. The light, and she goes out, and she walks down a trail and sees, yes. like, oh, yeah, fires mm-hmm. and the body of her possible grandma. Mm-hmm. So, did you notice the big old deeper footprints next to where she was walking? Yes. I did not. I All right. Yes. That is very important. <laughs> Mainly because that shows that there's somebody else going on there. Now, these footprints are bigger, deeper. They're obviously a man's footprints. And... Charlie sees Ellen, her grandma's body. And Annie comes out and get her because she's walking barefoot outside, which is just crazy. <laughs> Did we skip over the school? No, the school's right after this. School's oh. right after this, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. sorry. <laughs> but you later find out that Ellen's grave was, what's the word, desecrated? Desecrated, desecrated yeah. Mm-hmm. That's the word they use. Yeah. Ellen's okay, so gone. they... So after she was died pretty quickly, they went and brought, they already dug the body out then, I guess. Because yeah. he gets the call not too long after this. Maybe yeah. a week later. I don't remember when he gets the call, but he gets the call about that the grave site's been destroyed. A week. He said it's only been a week. Okay. Yeah, yeah. it's a week later, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So they, the cult moves quick. <laughs> cult, cult wastes no time. Cult, you don't want to be a part of a dilly-dallying cult. No. No. You gotta get it when the body's still fresh, okay? <laughs> like Reanimator. You know, they've all seen Reanimator. <laughs> they know. They know. <sighs> oh, by the way, random off top, but I'm going to mention anyway since you brought up Reanimator. Uh, Facebook reminded me that a year ago, I when I was playing Sound Hill Four, there was a cat in the fridge, a dead cat, and that's when I take bills. Oh, Reanimator joke. <laughs> yep. <sighs> so, God, that movie. Another movie you guys made me watch. Great movie. I didn't make you watch shit. No. <laughs> I did. I <laughs> did. Dope. I put it on the list. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then I thought Charlie was going to be like. Right when you introduce you're introduced to Charlie and you start seeing this stuff, like I'm like, okay, she has a she has a connection to spirit actually. She can see the dead, she can see things. Like I figured that was gonna play more into where this was going. I didn't <laughs> expect her to only be in part of this movie. <laughs> you and everybody else, because mm-hmm. the initial marketing for this movie was very Charlie heavy. Mm-hmm. Like the poster has Charlie. Yeah, on she's it. on the yeah. cover. Yeah. Just she her was head, in though? most of the trailer. Yeah. <laughs> like Everybody was expecting this to be a Charlie movie. Like, right. Just kidding. <laughs> creepy kid, yeah, creepy kid movie, right? I mean, yeah. you also get the uh, foreshadowing when she's at school and the bird dies, and then she cuts off the the fucking. She steals scissors, goes outside after school, and cuts off the bird's head. And somebody's watching her and like waves to her or something. It's a member of the cult. It yeah. is a member of the cult. If you see anybody doing anything creepy. that looks weird by themselves, it's the cult. Also, to add extra creepiness, in the morning before we watched this movie, I found a dead bird in front of my house, too. So that was also kind of, you know, added to this. Wait, that was before? I thought that was the day after. No, we just watched this yesterday. The bird was yesterday. Morning? Yeah, morning. Um, I saw it in the morning when I took the dog out. Poor bird. It was just there. Uh, so, anyways. yeah, that, that didn't help. That didn't that added to make creepier things. <laughs> I, I have a random question. Go ahead. So you know how she does the clicking of her yes. tongue? Is that just like, yeah, that that thing. Is that just a thing she does? Or I kind of notice she, is it like when she sees the spirit or feels? I took it as she was autistic or something of that nature and didn't yes. talk much. Yeah, she just a tick. Yeah. It's just a tick, okay. Yeah. I thought it might have been like related to payment or whatever his name is. It's just mostly to let you know that this is what Charlie does. So when things happen later in the movie, you go, oh, kind of thing. Yes, that I know as okay. well. <laughs> Sorry. I'm not that stupid. <laughs> Mansplaining does not work, even when you don't mean to do it, by the way, mm-hmm. audience. <laughs> okay. Uh, when you go back to the house, this is when you see the mother just locks the door. And it, I didn't realize this because maybe the movie didn't tell me until after this part, but she's living with her, which my brain was like, well, what put her in assisted living? Come on, guys. But... <laughs> give me those points. <laughs> uh, yeah, give me a that's call. a different thing there. Give me that. I, I... <laughs> <He's not laughs> that. My girlfriend can get set you up. <laughs> so weird uh, why that went in my brain i had no idea why i'm yeah. like why is she in assisted living why is she taking care of her you need to yeah well she was in hospice at the end she was yes. in hospice. they she do was, say that yep but was she living at home she was living yes. at home before she went to hospice you can still be in hospice and live at home 
Yeah, you can have in-home hospice, right? Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. Mm-hmm. Probably. I don't know. <laughs> no, it, it is a thing. No, it is. No, it is, it a, is thing. a thing. It also runs through me- through Medicare, sir, too, if you wanted to know. I can so tell that's you that. why I couldn't, when he was doing the hospice scene, I, or she was painting it, I couldn't tell. Was it in a hospital? It looked like a hospital, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it did. And there are hospice care centers, too. So Specifically for, I don't never know. No, you do not. But they do exist. I know that. For Even though several people told me I should, I don't. Yeah, it, I get, yeah. Because of my line of work, I know they exist, mm-hmm. so. And I think this is the first time that you see her then go to a grief meeting when she lies to her husband says she's going out to the movies. Why? Mm-hmm. I don't understand why yeah. she's lying about that. Because she didn't want to tell him she's going to a grief anonymous thing, I guess. It's interesting because there are a lot of secrets in this movie. And it's honestly, I think it's all tied in with the miniature making. The When Annie is making the miniatures, it's an easy way to, per, to show to the audience that she views herself as outside of the situation. Oh. And she treats her family that same way. Like, keeps them all at arm's length, doesn't really let them in, doesn't let them close enough. Like, she's kind of on the outside looking in. Oh, okay. I didn't, and I didn't put that together. A lot of that is due to the trauma of her family, which you find out about in that grief meeting. Yeah, yeah, when about she her about mom her dying and about her dad starving himself to death and about her brother dying suicide. Yeah, he suicide committed suicide because he had the, schizophrenia. Mom, the mom was putting people inside of him. Yes. So apparently that transformation did not work. <laughs> Literally, she was trying to we find out. <laughs> sorry, didn't take us. No, sorry, not that, that one. Reject, <laughs> square, that host square, reject. square peg into a round hole happens. <laughs> uh, yeah, I that whole grief scene again. And, you know, I'm, uh, this movie stirred up a lot of stuff for me, uh, which is why I like it so much, because that's what I think good art should do, should stir things up, whether it's humor and laughs or, or existential dread. <laughs> Either way, mm. something should get stirred up with good art. And I've sat in those circles, not a grief circles, but I've sat in a lot of circles in my day. And I've seen people, uh, you know, they're all anonymous, so obviously I'm not going to say who, but I've seen stuff like that happen where you see someone for the first time. You give them the opportunity to speak like, hey, and I mean, in those situations, you never pressure someone to talk. That, that's and that's pretty well observed here as well. They're not like, but it's weird because <laughs> any newcomers here, clearly she's the only newcomer. And they all <laughs> look at the newcomer exactly how it happens in the real world. <laughs> it really does. It's like, so uh, if any newcomers would like to say something and the idea is like, you don't have to. You, you can just sit and be here. Or we're all kind of mentally staring at you. No offense. I'm sorry. It's kind of what it is. Um, no worries if you don't feel like sharing, but we know. We know. <laughs> the we less you say, the worse you are. Tell us. <laughs> and, and honestly, it, it does come from a very pure place of, of help. And just, hey, you're, you're here. You know, you don't have to share. But I, there is an awkwardness to it. And when they had that beat, I was like, so if, there's a, if there are any newcomers here, if they'd like to share, now is the time. And you have this awkward beat of silence. I kind of, I had a, I had a good laugh. I actually chuckled. I'm like, oh yeah, she's going to say something because it's really awkward. We're all waiting for you to talk. And oh boy, does she. I've seen that happen too, where people are there for the first day and boy, you now know everything about their everything. Yeah. And, uh, exactly. and there's usually a time limit. The, the leader should be looking at the watch a little bit. Like you're, you're three to five minutes are up, my friend. But <laughs> true, it's not supposed to work. And um, I know it works. Yeah, it does. Yeah, at oh. least the recovery meetings I've been in. Yeah, well, the reason is it's a crowded group. You can have somebody start really sharing too much, and then everybody else is like on the side. Oh. So you, 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 as a leader of a recovery group, you generally want to keep people like to three to five minutes, depending on how much time you have and how many people are there. But yeah, I've because I've also led recovery groups too, and I've had them been like, all right, I can I have some like nonverbals that I'll use, like okay, and you're not supposed to respond anyway, whatever. <laughs> not to get inside the circle, inside the circle <sighs> on. Uh, yeah, that's why people come here for, hey, listen, this is a movie about hereditary, okay? If you look here for, like, nonstop chuckles, this is not the episode for you, my wrong friends. You, go listen wrong, to the Elf. Yeah, yeah Elf. <laughs> go listen to the Reanimator. <laughs> I was laughing my head off the whole time. And yeah, it's laughing my head off. <laughs> yeah. hey. oh. We're all back oh. in. Uh, grumpy well, old speaking man of that, the next scene is when Peter, which I actually did not know his name until way later in this movie, it's like, hey, mom, I need to borrow the car. She's like, oh, well, take your sister with you to school thing. And I'm like, you obviously know you ain't going to the school thing because you're like, well, don't be drinking then. Oh, I won't be drinking. Like, she knew. I just told you no, mom. <laughs> he doesn't drink. He nope. doesn't drink. No, he he didn't drink, so he didn't lie to her technically. No, he just got high instead. Yeah. Which, I mean, she hi. asked him if he was going to drink. He doesn't <laughs> get high, though. Like, oh, he was about to, I guess. I feel like we're 
everybody gets high some way these days. Yes. I mean, I'm also like, when I speak of like, when it comes to like stuff with marijuana, I think of like with edibles where it doesn't take a whole, I mean, it takes time. It doesn't take a whole lot, but I don't know anything about when it comes to actually smoking. I've never done that. I don't like smoking. And neither do I. So I, <laughs> but I, from my understanding, it takes longer, doesn't it? I mean, it doesn't take longer, but it, it, it can go faster, but it takes more hits. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I have no idea. Yeah. Like I don't, I don't smoke anymore because it makes me devastatingly sick, but I used to. <laughs> I mean, and the whole thing where he just leaves her at one point when the girl's like, hey, come follow me. And he's like, hey, Charlie, just wait here. I'm like, well, that's completely realistic. Oh, yeah. Like, he's 16. Yeah. He's going to be led around by his dick. Everybody knows this. Absolutely. Locked me in a bedroom. Wait, what? What? (laughs) Him and his girlfriend at the time had a house party, and he stuck me in the bedroom with the dogs and was like, wait here and don't tell mom. I, oh, I 100% told mom. Of course you did. <laughs> oh, of course you did. Wow. 100% At least give you told something to entertain you? Like, here's some, vid- here's some video games, here's something? Like... I entertained myself with the dogs. They were oh, cute. Okay. But, anyways. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's the, so, so, this thing kind of thing does happen, and you're 100% right, Ken. That is absolutely, it's very lived in and real. Like, uh, Charlie, it's cake over there. Eat something. Clear, you know, just. Eat the, do something that is not this with me right now here. Uh, I want to go talk to the girl. Yeah, I know. Eat some I cake. Really Charlie. Do God. something around these pe- people that are easily at least four to five years older than you. Like Please. Nobody cared there was a child there. Nobody. Okay. <laughs> Charlie's only three years younger than Peter. I know. They said it was, she was 13. But she it's... looks so much younger. She, she really younger. does. Yeah. She, she looks like she's younger. I also thought he was older. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, like, I mean, the actor must have been, but I mean, but yeah, I, no, when, I thought he was about 17, which is only like a year older. <laughs> I thought 18, senior again, semantics, but okay, that's just <sighs> but she doesn't look like today's 13 year old, okay? Today's 13 year old, like, has makeup and crop tops, and you're thinking of someone not, we know, yeah, <laughs> and that's not Charlie, she's what Charlie's, I look like as a 13 year old. <laughs> Charlie's an artist, yeah. <laughs> Charlie draws. Charlie makes toys. She's her mother's daughter. Yeah. Yeah. Very much so. Yeah. Very much so. Almost like she inherited an artistic degree. She chops off pigeons' heads. To make toys. Look, man, art is art. Art Art is art. art. You pick your medium, okay? (laughs) That's right. Well, I mean, to be fair, this is art, too, in some form, right? Sure. That's what I think. When when she has the allergic reaction, when she's like, I don't feel good, Peter. I was like, wow, this is, that was, like, we were talking about, that was strong. I did not, I was thinking to myself, well, shouldn't you have an EpiPen in the, in the car? But again. Why you know. don't they carry the EpiPen? Because even at the funeral, she's like, does it have nuts in it? We don't have an EpiPen. Why yeah, don't see? you have an EpiPen? Because you forget. <laughs> you forget. You no, really do. I'm, I'm not even kidding. If. You are so allergic. I am allergic to a lot of things that can put me into anaphylactic shock. Oh, no. Ask me how often I have my EpiPen. How often? Not often enough. <laughs> I didn't even have it when I went camping this year. <gasps> wow. Oh, you know, there are bees wow. outside, right? That sounds so yeah. scary. That's where bees live. Yeah. <laughs> that is where bees, generally, yes. That's where people Reason number 87 why the outside is very inconvenient and we just don't need it anymore. And but, dangerous. I mean, <laughs> hey, when I, when I'm happy yeah. when I have the days when my wife doesn't have to go to work. I don't have to go anywhere and I just could stay in the house the whole, the whole day. I'm, I'm happy with those days. That's most days. Like <laughs> five minutes to work and you stay in the house all day. I know. It's wonderful. <laughs> I'm enjoying my year to two years of however long I have this working from home before I go elsewhere again. Like, I'm enjoying this. So, so are they? In- <sighs> yes, they are. But oh man, I so he's driving fast to the hospital, and I'm watching him speed. I remember I, I made a comment to Tiff. I'm like, "Well, you shouldn't be speeding." <laughs> I don't speed, by the way. Okay, yeah, but so we... you're, you know, Tiff's not in the back dying. I this we had this conversation. <laughs> I said, so if I was dying and I couldn't breathe, you're gonna go forty or the speed limit. You're not gonna try to get me to the hospital. That's just rude. Like that's just. <laughs> Well, she if I was, she's like you're not gonna go eighty like you're gonna go you're not gonna you're you're gonna go you're gonna go thirty five I say if I go eighty to thirty five we're all gonna die anyway so it won't matter <laughs> but then we'll die together <laughs> we're all going down together <laughs> my she poor poor tips back there trying to breathe and Mike's like hands on ten and two <laughs> let's get that cruise control go five on over. <laughs> I don't ever speed I was speeding <laughs> once in, in in Wisconsin they pulled me over gave me two hundred dollar ticket and I have not forgiven them he's traumatized. <laughs> 
<laughs> wow, Wisconsin. <laughs> poor, poor Tiff's dad back there trying to suck air through a straw in her throat. And Mike is like, you know, there's always a cop posted up right here. Always, always <laughs> somebody. Like, I right, a speed trap. <laughs> always here. Just so you know. Yeah, listen, you, you're not going to pay my ticket. Because <laughs> <laughs> you'll be dead. <laughs> oh, but I did not like he, when he sees a deer and he swerves. I'm like, okay, we all fine, whatever. I did not expect because she gets out the head, and I, I think I heard Tiff go, "Oh no!" As you just see the pole, you see her stick out her head, and all of a sudden, boom! I literally was like, "No, no, no!" And I had to cover my eyes. It was awful. Oh, and the scene immediately that happens once Charlie is um, dead, loses relieved her of her head. <laughs> that scene of Peter just sitting in the oh, car in shock. Oh, Jesus. Oh, oh that, so oh, did he? Question. Yeah. So here, so go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Did he just leave the body in there and go home and go to bed? Yeah. Yep. That's the thing about trauma, like extreme trauma yep. and the body shock reaction. That's the type of shit you do. It was. He was under so much shock. It was probably muscle memory at that point. Like yeah. his brain was like, okay, it's time yep. to go home, and he his, just drove home. His brain has not come to grips with the reality of what just happened because what just happened should be impossible. Your mind cannot fathom that eventuality. You can see it in movies, but you, the, the idea that's like a once in a million thing that happened. So his brain refused to believe what happened. So he, I totally read it as, yeah, he's just going to drive off. What else are you going to do? And <laughs> I, I still think a very strange, but very, again, lived in real reaction to something horrendous happening. He knows it's all his fault. He knows he's the one who's caused it to a certain extent, of course. But it was an accident, obviously. But he was also under the influence. And he was he told have brought her there he and... should have brought her there and told her to eat the hazelnut cake, even though he didn't know it was a hazelnut cake. He just saw a cake. <laughs> like, Charlie likes chocolate. Go for it. Eat and... the chocolate, Charlie. And almost looking, looking back on it, too, because, again, once you start looking back on the movie, you start trying to pick out the parts where, like, oh, is this a possession thing? Is this a possession thing? I don't know if that is for him because, again, we're still at the point where Charlie is the is the host, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah. for me, that reads this as him. I mean, it's the whole scene is just stunning. And it lingers. feels like it lingers forever. The, well, the, it, the air stops in yeah. those moments. And, and when it did yeah. in the theater, too. Oh, I can't like imagine. everybody. Can't there imagine. was a imagine. huge collective gasp oh. when that best. like right before it happened. Oh. I went to go see it with my friend Ash and they like just like jumped up against me and like grabbed on my arm and like and was like, <gasps> oh, that's how I would and like, everybody did. And then it was just it was silent after it. You could hear the individual pebbles underneath the tire like. It was silent. It was amazing. I can't. That's the why communal you go experience, to theater, folks. Yes, the communal experience mm. of this stuff is uh. priceless. You can't get that at home. Mm. No, I. I'm I okay imagine. with that though. <laughs> no, I'm not. I wish I had seen this in theaters. I would have oh, loved I, to have that experience. Yeah, I, 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 really I can't I see this in theaters. To, no, I, I can't see horror movie theaters. No, he was upset with me. Oh, this was this was a special film experience. Yeah, boy I, howdy. Yeah, I wish boy, I. I wish howdy. I had a. That's a pwned up for that one, but. Yeah, it's uh, it's just a really, and I, and I didn't even realize her head came off at the first impact because that all okay, happened so see. fast. Oh, okay. I didn't, so I, I didn't realize. I I knew she was dead. I mean that the sound that thunk. I mean I don't know I if that her would. Take... Body flew out the window. Yeah, so I mean, because I I was thinking if you hit it, you hit it that speed, you would just. But I guess the body wouldn't have enough space to go and uh, yeah. I I was confused. I was like, did her head fall off? Did her body fly out the window? What's happening? And then he drives off and doesn't answer any of my questions. Nope, not until you see the next morning with a head on the road. <laughs> Covered in ants. Well, when the mother started screaming, oh. that answered my question. Oh, God. Yeah. Okay. That's so the it. next morning, the next morning you get one of the most grief-stricken performances uh-huh. ever put to film. That scene. God. Oh yep. God! Just give Tony Collette every award ever. Yeah, that was that was my Oscar moment. That was my yeah. Oscar moment. Right there. That was it. That was my Oscar moment because <sighs> I just wanted her, to sob with her. Just the feeling of how because she, she keeps saying saying I want to die. It's this idea of this so much grief is trying to just whip at her body. She can't just the way she delivers those screams and cries. 
is again feels insanely real. It's ex- mm-hmm. and it's exceptionally real. If anybody's had a situation where you've been in that point where you are in so much trauma and grief, you literally feels like your heart and your soul's trying to escape your body. Like you are, you don't know what position to put your body in. It's it's so physical and visceral as well. She's bent up. She's like doubled over. All her husband can do is just be there and present and let her just go through this moment. It's it and, and the slow tracking shot to the right as she is just vomiting emotion. It's unbelievable, unbelievable. And it's not like oh she cried. She went went to a place like she freaking went to a place to put that performance on. And Lady Gaga is singing, tell me something, boy. That, that's the, and that, that gets nominated. But someone literally going through a traumatic experience on screen for you does not. Really? Oscar voters? Also, I think one of those movies had something to do with Hollywood, maybe. So, I, I mean, that's fair. Hollywood does like when you talk about Hollywood, by the way. Oh, boy, does it. La La Land and La La, 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 La Land. <laughs> La La Land. I've never seen it, but I've never seen I always it. see a damn commercial for it when we go see a movie with Nicole Kidman going, movies make the magic happen. I'm like, shut up. I wanted my movie. Hey, you know what, man? Heartbreak does feel good in a place like this. So back <laughs> <on>. <laughs> Yeah, it does. <sighs> that was good. Especially here. Yeah. Yes. This is a, yeah. Fuck. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was deep. It was a deep. Uh... And I was like, okay, now this movie's just gotten weird. I I remember it looked and we're like, I'm like, we're only 45 minutes in or half an hour in. I'm like, can I say how much do we have left? Yeah, so yeah we have like an hour or something that left. That was the point. I was like, how much do we have left? Because I was done after that game off. I was done. I was yep. ready. She's like, I ain't going to be on the episode tomorrow. I'm done. We're, I'm not watching this. I'm like, I'm not watching it by myself. <laughs> oh, really? You really outed out. You were almost like, I'm not coming to the I show. Was- tapped out i was like nope i don't think i can watch anymore i'm done <laughs> this is the woman wow. that likes horror movies <laughs> it was well, everyone's got a line everyone's got a line yeah. for me i don't know why you didn't have a problem in hellraiser with dicks on the on the pole and the guy getting his skin ripped off nope but behead the girl and she's done no nah, we can never watch highlander together huh because they behead people on highlander though. a lot no, oh, yeah this is people yes. behead. <laughs> And, but I think I connected. No, I get it. And already, I mean, she was only in the movie for, like, what, 15 minutes? But you're yeah. supposed to connect with her. I mean, that's the whole, like, they do a good job of that. And, like, movies like Hellraiser and Nightmare on Elm Street and Halloween, they give you that cathartic yeah. release. Yeah. No, I know. I This mean, doesn't. Dramatic no. purpose. Oh, no, it does not. Nope. This just keeps piling up and piling up. Yeah, because you you have her you have the funeral for Charlie. You have then right after oh. that where she's crying more. The you know, funeral obviously. for Charlie. Oh no! I mean, oh, it was God. just the way it that is. shot. Oh God, oh. that shot where the camera's going into the ground oh. with the like right along with the coffin. Oh. Yeah, the same pace. Just beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. I just can't. And you have uh, this is when you have. Them looking at the, the father's looking at Charlie's drawings, which <laughs> plays a part very soon in a little notebook thing that she has, mm-hmm. which again makes sense. You just lost a child. You're going to be looking at things that were important to them. You know, I didn't think that where they were going to go with this in the movie does soon, but when it, when it brings back to Peter, because this, this is the first time you see Peter at school again, which again makes sense. You, you know, you still got to go to school. You're going to try to have your life be as normal as you can after a traumatic event. And like when he's smoking behind the bleachers and I, he starts having like an allergic reaction. Almost. His friend's like, mm-hmm. dude, it's just weed. Yeah, <laughs> basically. But, like, he starts going through... What he starts having mean? a sympathetic reaction, almost. Yeah. Yep. <sighs> and then this is when the movie starts to... You start realizing something... Well, <laughs> you know, this is a part of the movie where I would like to see again, because how much some how much what what this is when things start to kind of come in place this is when the mother goes to not not peter choking but just because of what's about to happen when the mother goes to the grief meeting and joan's like hi my name is joan and, <sighs> and she made up that awful story about her son and her grandson darling yeah <laughs> was it a story yeah was it a story i guess i assumed it was i right. don't really know that did they sacrifice them to payment too don't know. We never find out. I guess we, don't we know. never really know. Maybe they went to a town in Norwegian somewhere in Norway. <laughs> it's possible. Know. And I really just want to give a shout out to Ann Dowd as Joan mm. because she's so good. She's like, incredible. You we believe just that she her wants movie. nothing but the best for Annie yep. <laughs> until sure you understand that she doesn't. And you're until like, oh, you realize. Fuck. She was the grandma's, like, best friend. <laughs> oh. We just watched the new Exorcist movie, and she was in there. Yeah. What? 
Yeah. She's a nurse in the new Exorcist movie. She did oh, really well. I mean, she played. I forget what it's called. Movie. Believer or something. Yeah, Exorcist Believer. Oh, I didn't want to go see that. It's, I enjoyed it. I guess it's doing really bad. It's creepy as fuck, but it's not. It's not this level of creepy and fucked up, but it's creepy. I watched a little expert on it, and I guess they paid four hundred million for the right to the Exorcist franchise. Yeah. Well, there goes all your money there, buddy. <laughs> There's art. Before art. Started, before they even did anything, hired actors, anything, $400 million. I mean, if you're expecting your movie to make back that, I got news for you. You're not Star Wars. Because <laughs> they wanted to do a new trilogy. I don't think that's going to happen. That's just- well, but it's also interesting, too, because, again, and I love when movies do this. It plays its cards really close to the vest because I'm looking at this, and when you're watching this, you're just seeing a kind person at a recovery yeah. meeting encouraging someone to walk into the door because, again, I, if it's too much of me being personal about it, I, I will curtail. No, but fine. you know, I don't mind. No, because I, I've just had experience with these with this world of kind of like again living in circles and and that I, I I've never done it personally, but I definitely know people in my orbit who would absolutely some see someone pull up and then walk over and say, "Hey, I, I saw you last so, week. Were you, were you going to come in?" And not pressure, because Joan is like, no pressure. Hey, if you're gonna go home, go home. I don't think Joan went in though. Well, that's the thing. No, no, but I'm saying when you when you before you realize yeah. Joan is, is yeah. a cultist, it's she just looks cool. like somebody yeah. at the meeting. And you know, especially if you're new to a meeting, you don't know all the people there. And people do come in and out, and people are only there for one week or two weeks, you know, that's kind of how it works. And you have your regulars. She just reminded me very clear, like, oh, she looks like a regular at the meeting. She saw her one week and realized, hey, let me. She looks like she wants to turn around and leave. That's a very easy thing. People do it all the time. They go up, and the meeting I go to is up three floors. One of the things that we say is that it's hard to walk up those stairs. It's it's hard to walk up those stairs the first time. And people definitely look at those stairs, turn around, and go back in their car. It's really hard to do that, which also speaks to why she probably doesn't want her husband to know, right? Because again, that's a very it's a private thing. It's a me thing. I'm going to try to do this grief counseling thing. I don't believe in it. And I may not go through with it, which also speaks to a lot of that unwillingness to share with her husband. But she, yeah, and that's so good because she is she reads perfectly as someone who just wants to help. She's been through trauma. She she sees it on her face and wants to invite her to a place that she thinks is going to help. <laughs> now, we all know she's just a spider catching a fly. But yeah. <laughs> now, yeah. now, now we know. No, uh, you don't. You don't see it. I mean, no, they it, don't. She brings because she brings. She has Annie go to her. I think does Annie go to her house at this point, or does she meet her at the restaurant at the grocery store, and then she goes to her house? She I can't. sees her at the. No, she doesn't. She, she meet her at the. No, yeah, no. She goes house to her house first. right in the beginning, yeah. and then later on, she meets her at the store. Oh, and goes to her house yes. again. That's yes. when she does the seance. Yeah, it's like any but, good manipulator, you start it small. You connect to the person. You act that you care. Like she, this is when she. Gets Annie to talk about the whole sleepwalking and how she almost lit her both Children her kids on fire, fire with paint thinner. Oh boy! But she was sleepwalking. Sleepwalking is a very scary thing to me. Yes. <laughs> I I to have a bad dream is a bad dream. To be walking and animated whilst having a bad dream is really really scary. And That's I don't terrifying. and I don't know why. Lately, everything with me has been the occult because like, I think I mentioned a couple weeks ago, I've been reading all that laid barren and like just, like, I don't know. It's been really, that's the kind of scary stuff I've been really into lately. And boy, oh boy, is this like right in that pocket. <laughs> oh. I blame Mike. It's all Mike's fault. <laughs> oh, that's fair. It's just, I don't know. I just, I was just like, that was just so deep and dark when she talked about how she almost killed her kids and like her sleepwalking issue. And then this is when you see her making the diorama. She goes back when she's back to the house of the beheading, which I was like, yeah, this is okay. Yeah, that's right. healthy. I that's know. Healthy. It's like her. That's not healthy, but it's like her therapy. Yeah, I mean, this well, is my therapy, but there's no like one involved. Her that husband do. is a therapist. I know. <laughs> I know. I told you, her husband's a therapist. Yep. So that could be why she's keeping it from him. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, that's because, true too. Because yeah. she doesn't want him to be, well, honey, I can help you if you want. I'd be like, fuck you. <laughs> Put the lime in the coconut and drink the bowl up and call me in the morning. So, yeah, why not? Yeah, yeah, that's perfectly good solution. Just get the fucking drunk. <laughs> a very get stupid song up. by Nielsen is what yes. I'm referencing. Yes, I yeah. know that, but oh. I don't understand why you're. I don't sense. really know either. It just seemed like appropriate thing to say. Okay. Yeah. Oh, those are good doctor's orders. Yeah, <laughs> that's what it made me think of. But, and then have some the, happy pills and. <laughs> When you have the dinner, I thought this dinner was strong. Like the way the characters are and the well, the actors and everything. Like 
where Annie just starts yelling at Peter at one point. He's like, he's like, it's your fault. You told me you made me bring her. And he's like, I'm like, technically you're not that wrong. He's, he's not, not wrong. That's what all. I would say if my mother started screaming shit like that at me. I'd place the blame out She would have had that happen to her baby boy. So, yeah. <laughs> and this was my Oscar moment yeah. for Tony Collette, the I am your mother speech. Mm. Oof. It was strong. So yeah. good. Yeah. So good. And Peter it's... just sits there with that face on his face. Uh, and, and and what I love about this and everything leading up to this, again, I say love because it's so oh, it's wonderfully wonder, so wonderfully done. Obviously, it's not a wonderful <laughs> thing, but it's a... Well, this movie hasn't so, gotten, like, crooked crazy yet. Well, actually, but it kind of has, right? Because not this is the level this, I'm talking about. Well, no, no, no. But I'm saying like in a real because this is all real world stuff right now, yeah. right? Right. Depending on how you feel about the occult and about demons and stuff, right? We can all you can't be debated. But the reality of families dealing with grief and what that does to people and to family groups is so well observed and and rooted in something real here. Yeah. It, that is the scare for me. I mean, obviously the the spooky stuff is scary, and you know people crawl on the ceiling and all that stuff is freaking terrifying. And we'll, we'll get to all that, all that stuff. But all this grief stuff here, it feels so real again and lived in. It's I love how they're sitting down to a normal thing. And as a family, they're trying to learn how to navigate a life that's been irrevocably changed. Like two days ago, we were these people. Now we are these people. And we all have to do the same things as these people than we did when we were two days ago, people. And how do we do that? How do we sit down at a meal and compliment dad on the cooking? Or how do we drive to school how do we say hey how was your day today my day was fine my day was not fine my sister is dead like but they them having to learn how to be a family again and having no help in doing that is destroying them and it's such a sad it's so sad but again this this whole scene beautifully expresses that because this is a this is a knot that was going to break this is a rope that was going to break at some point it was so tense and it's just a little thing and then this whole thing explodes. And again, just the the pure emotion and the the physical acting that Tony Collette does, like her oh, so her facial expressions and the way she is just seething, her breath, breathing. It's just jaw dropping. Good. Makes me upset she didn't get not at least nominated for an Oscar for this. Yeah, I mean, why would you? Why, why would she you? Really should have. Like yes. yeah. says the Oscars hate horror movies and they're assholes. Both are both true statements. Yes. <laughs> This is when Annie runs into Joan at the art store. And it wasn't until, like, especially later on, thinking back to this movie, how important this little part is of of the manipulation. Where she's like, oh, I, you know, I did the seance and I talked to my grandson and you just need an object that, you know, I had these people over and they taught me. And then that's when she does, she does the seance and she shows her the glass moving. And I think a big part, one, I believe this, and two, we just watched Exor- the Exorcist movie. I'm like, you yeah, really shouldn't be fucking around with stuff like this. Like, chances are you're going to get, you might get somebody to talk to you, but it ain't going to be the one you're looking for. So mm-hmm. is the glass the new Ouija board? I guess. Like, okay. I don't know. That's so, the glass and it's like I, the I do believe that there's spirits and demons and all that mm-hmm. stuff. I, I do believe that. And I also do believe if you start trying to talk to something. It's you, not who you want. No, you don't want to mess with the others. Don't mess with that part of the, you know, whether you believe it or not, don't mess with it. Bill talks to me enough. I don't need to reach out to him. It's, uh, I've had weird shit happen. I, I I believe enough that there's some that there's stuff out there. Sorry, not you, Bill. <laughs> I I figured I'm ghostly specter from the other side of a microphone. I'm sure. <laughs> My dad's name was Bill. <laughs> okay. Cool. No, I've had I've had weird stuff happen to me that I believe enough. I I believe in that stuff, but I like I was just thinking to myself like, yeah, you should not be fucking around with this. Like, you do not want to be doing this. Is not <laughs> not the person talking to you. You think it is? So I, I don't even- know, but. It, Oh, How much she's manipulating her, and like you know, now now that I know where the movie's going, after you know, after looking back, like this is what she's she's planting the seed, almost literally, so she can be mm-hmm. you know possessed. Yeah, yeah. Read read these words that you don't understand. Just read them. It's fine. It makes glasses move. That's all you need to know. Don't worry about what they say. They just be. But again, and that is so good. Do you in cough this. in the third word. <laughs> Knock like that. Right. <laughs> yeah. The uh, the um. And that's so good in this again, but she's still coming off as someone who just really wants to help. She just happens to be outside the art store. Why are you at the art store? I don't know. Probably. I, I don't I want to talk the about the art store. Oh, you yeah. want it? Okay. Go for it, man. No, Tiff actually nailed it. Buying oh. the chalkboard. You see it in the back of Joan's car. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> oh. 
Really? Yeah. The chalkboard that belonged to her grandson? Her favorite, yeah. His favorite chalkboard. Huh. Oh my yeah. God. <laughs> okay, that's Get good. Out of that here. is good. Let's go. Tiff, up. Yeah. High five. Yes. Over the internet. Boom. Is that the first time or second time you? I'm assuming second time. Second time. But yeah. still, that's impressive. That's, that's good. great. Oh my gosh, that's so <laughs> that's good. That's funny. Can I do the job? I thought she was just waiting for her. <laughs> that too. Also, well, buying the props. Was. But she had a reason as well. Oh, oh my gosh, that's so good. Wow. Job. Did the grandson's favorite job. <laughs> I had that part. All right. Uh, then this is when this is the movie Wait. got really weird at me for this part. So Annie goes home and she starts seeing, she wakes up in bed and starts seeing the ants on bed and the ants crawling all over P- Peter's face. I'm like, what the fuck is happening? I thought it was all real. And then I put in my note, she starts hallucinating. Oh, and this is when she tells Peter she didn't want him and that, which all turns out is all a dream, even though I thought it was real at first. Yeah, like it seemed like a dream and then she woke up and then it was still a dream. And Yeah, it was weird. Dream within a dream kind of thing. Yeah. 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 Has anyone ever experienced that? Like that kind of dream within a dream? Yes, I yep. hate it. Yeah, not that it's I not remember, fun. but I'm sure I have. Oh, I hate not it. Not great. I try not to remember any dreams I ever had because I do not like dreaming. <laughs> I, re- I don't. I don't, like I don't like dreaming. No, I don't like I, it. Usually they're I, not good. Listen, I don't remember many dreams. I'm not a person. My wife remembers her dreams in vivid, vivid detail, and uh, it's it's pretty it's pretty uh, it's pretty cool. But actually, not because her dreams are terrifying. Is she but. And I don't know. She remembers her dreams very well. And I don't remember my dreams at all. But I do remember the ones that were dreams within dreams. Those are <laughs> not fun. Like you said, they rarely are good. Please enter the matrix. That's more of, you know, God, what the hell is that name of the movie? Inception? Yes, that movie. <laughs> there you go. Okay, this is when Annie brings down the family to do the seance. Yeah, and, and this is and this too, because again, that, cause that's also the scene where they're screaming at each other and they light, a fire, light on fire, right? It the, the, the cuts... It's to shot of them yes. yelling at each other, and then yeah. his hair is matted because of the lighter fluid, and her hair is now matted with lighter fluid, and then they both light a flame. Her face, as she's sobbing and the beam lit ablaze in her dream, is so scary. It so is. scary. Just terrifying. Just, oh, again, another another thing to, to pile on to the, <laughs> the, 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 to the dread plate. Why award? <laughs> well, not Oscar Scholar Award, so. Oh, when they were doing the seance... And I forget what she oh, she has a notebook. She uses a notebook, Charlie's notebook to try to summon her. And she just starts growling at one point. And I was like, yeah, you didn't summon Charlie. Yeah, that's healthy. That's what. <laughs> oh, yeah. I missed it where she got possessed, though. Yeah. I was like, did you see it? Is there a light that shines on her? No, you can physically see something enter her body. She like kind of gasped. She gasped and, and like. Straight. Yeah. It mm-hmm. ugh, that creeped me the fuck out. Even thinking about it right now is giving me chills, and they're not electrifying. It's just <laughs> not. And then she starts crying. <laughs> I don't like it. I'm like because I do believe that. I believe that's a real thing that can happen to people. I mean, that's why I, you'll never see me fucking around with this stuff. But let's go get a Ouija board. No. <laughs> <sighs> oh, no, I've had enough bad things in my life happen to me and weird shit. I don't need to summon it. And it, it, it's just there. It's, okay. <laughs> it's just freaking <sighs> senior homes. I don't need to summon nothing. <laughs> no, you you've had experiences too, though, at your job know. where. All of a sudden, oh, look, there's a woman walking near the side of the hall, but there's nobody there over was here. A, that was an awful night. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, shit like that happens. So. Well, man, when she's growling, just like, whoo, I was like, this is, I'm uncomfortable. And then when, when the when her husband throws the freaking water on her, I'm like, well, yeah, that, and then it snaps her out of it. But did, would that work, though? <laughs> Apparently it did. She's not completely Clearly. possessed. She's not like exorcist level possessed type of thing where it's... Have you ever been possessed by no. a spirit? So how do you know? <laughs> because it's not like well, an exorcist movie. Uh-huh. Well, she's, she's I, the way I see it, she's like in a trance. You know, oh, like okay. in, a, in a spiritually induced trance. And that water would, you know... Again, in the fiction of the movie, yeah, this seemed very plausible. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sure. And we're and still we still don't know at the point this point that there's a possession things going on. Like we really don't no. know that yet. I mean, we right, see right. it with the growling, but that's it. Well, you did notice that she was speaking in Charlie's voice, right? Oh, well, that was yeah. That, that was that was. I guess that was the first sign. Yeah, I guess this, you're right. This is the same scene. You're right. Yeah. So now that is the first sign, which was so again so freaking scary. Oh my god! Oh. Yeah, the way they mixed the two voices together. <laughs> Just insanity. Love it. Love it. Oh, I did not. I did not. Oh, not all that. And this movie still doesn't go to, like, this movie still didn't get to the point where it turns the dial up to 11 yet. Nope. It gets worse. I mean, oh, better. God. Yeah, there's a scene that was like, <laughs> I am not okay with this movie. I am not okay. We are the we're almost there, yes. There's a part around that attic where I was like, nope. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. You gotta be more specific. I will there's be. Basically, in the attic. <laughs> basically, from this moment forward, 
it's it's Let's starting go. to put its foot on the gas a lot harder. Yeah, because you this what is the you have Annie working on the dioramas. You have Peter at school. This is when Annie freaks out and just starts breaking all her dioramas. And Peter gets well. No, that doesn't happen yet. No, not yet. This is just it. Just shows yeah. him at school. I think the girl looking at him kind of weird, like you know, are you okay? Because the girl you know, that he keeps chasing is she part of the cult? I don't think so. I thought maybe she might be because she. She. That's the reason he went to the party. Yeah, it is. And but... she led him into the be- bedroom. Yeah. He, you guys remember Peter's friend with a man bun, right? Yeah. He's in the cult. Yeah. I th- oh, okay, was it? I wasn't sure. Man, I don't know who this guy was. Uh, he, under the bleachers, you briefly yeah. see oh. him. Oh. Like all the way to the left. Oh, he's in one of the scenes with the cult near the end? Well, yeah, he's, 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 he's Oh. You see the hair, that's all you see. Oh, I did not catch that. Right? Oh, yeah. That's okay. I wasn't sure if that was him. I was like, it could be. Like, a lot of people have a man bun, though. And I have in my notes that Annie goes to Charlie's room and starts seeing, I think she starts seeing the notebook drawing itself or something. Yeah, mm-hmm. the notebook is starting to have pictures of Peter with his eyes X'd out. Which oh, yeah. I would fucking burn that book immediately. I got news for you. I start seeing a book move. It's going into fire. She tried. It's yeah, she tried. That's I know. Tried. Didn't work out. And then it's going in a box and it's going down the river. It's leaving. It ain't staying here. We're doing Jumanji style if we have to. It's leaving. And back. <laughs> yes. Well, years later. <laughs> the guy that buried it was probably dead at that point. But um, <laughs> after she throws Charlie's sketchbook in the fire, her clothes go up in flames. That was good. Excellent. Excellent. And this is and right before she does that. This is when she goes in Peter's room and tries to start choking Peter and tries to rip his head off in her sleep. Was that her, right? Nah. Uh, inconclusive. Inconclusive. Yeah, I think it really is inconclusive. I assuming it was her, but I we're not sure. Either. It didn't look like her arms. Mm. I thought for like at first, I thought it was supposed to be Charlie, but then I'm like, don't. Look too yeah, because he sees Charlie right before this in the corner, which again was freaky as hell. And then is that the one with the where the ball falls? Yeah. Yes. Oh, I hated that scene. <laughs> I was like, oh. Ugh, gosh, so good. So Sorry, I'm just like. Visual. Yeah, there's a lot going on in there. Yeah, I, I I always read that as like Charlie somehow, some way. Um, yeah. Yeah, the, I did, like you said, Ken, the arms don't quite match. And I think because he still has bruises on his neck, you can tell with yeah. one of those close up shots, he's got those bruises still. Yeah. Um, which again, Spence said it wasn't like a real attack that happened, not just a dream. Kind of like, you know. So you could kind of interpret this as maybe Charlie being like, you took my head, I'm going to take mm-hmm. yours. Yeah. Yeah, right, that's right. how I took it. And then, but I didn't, I wasn't sure if it was his mother because his mother's in the room like right after that. Or if it was a cult member, I think the YouTube video said that there was a cult member trying to rip his head off. Look at that bed, though. There's not enough room. Yeah. That oh, bed yeah. is right up against the wall. Yeah. Do they want to hang out the window, maybe? Probably on the second floor, so good luck with that one. The yeah. angle was wrong on that one, too. Like, I did check for that. Fine, Keith. <laughs> and this is I when... I've watched this movie a lot. I know. Uh, and then when Annie goes to Joan's house or Joan's apartment and, you, you know, she's not there, but she sees the symbol on the rug, just like her mother made. She makes a comment like, "Oh, those same kind of rug my mother used to make for us." Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. this is, and then when it when it does show, you can see in the room, you see the pentagram, you see Peter's photo in the center of the pentagram, you see much other weird shit in the house. I was expecting to maybe see Joan being dead, like you know, she tried to summon something and it killed her. I was expecting that too, yeah, but okay, not, so not to be, yeah. No, and I, this I is had... when Peter's at school, and you'd have that random thing where Joan's like, "I expel you!" I expel, just yelling at him. <laughs> Where he's like, what the fuck's going on here? She's trying to expel his spirit. I so, think it worked. So that Charlie can enter it. Yeah, I don't think it was Charlie that entered, though. Well, well I don't I mean, kind of. Because there is Charlie one comment is... where Charlie says she feels like she should be a man or something, I think, like that at one point early in this movie. No, she said Grandma wanted me Oh, yeah, Grandma wanted me to be a boy. boy. That's what it was. Yeah. <laughs> okay. He didn't pay attention. For a very specific reason, though. Yes. <laughs> For, yeah. But man, when that the part when when Annie is going through her mother's stuff and all these boxes that they have, and then she just starts flipping through things, and all of a sudden they're seeing Joan and all these pictures. Did you notice when she pulled out the mat that said Peter, Annie, Charles, not Charlie? Oh, I Charles. did not see that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh. Okay. Yeah. She really wanted her to be a boy. Really wanted her to be a boy. Absolutely. Really? <laughs> yep. But man, that moment when you find out that Joan knew her mother, I was that. That's like when the freaking. You know, like the mic drops. That's when, like the ham- the that's when the hammer drops. Yeah, that's your like, yeah. oh no, here we go. Because this is, is now. the movie starts going to hell at this point, essentially, like for the characters. Like Annie goes in the attic and finds the dead body of her mother, just rotting. Yeah. 
with the sigil above it. Mm-hmm. And no head. Damon sigil. No head. No head. No head. Sans head. <sighs> and then at the same point, you have Peter freaking out at school when he's trying to, like, break his nose on his desk. Oh, man. So, oh. apparently, Alex Wolf actually wanted to break his nose on the desk. And the director wouldn't let him. Really? Mm-hmm. So, like, gave him a soft uh, desktop. But there was still a hard part underneath it. And then he accidentally ended up dislocating his jaw during this scene. Oh, oh. really? Which is why his I face looks a little really fucked up sometimes. Oh, wow. Wow. Fa- it was an old injury that just rehappened, though. Oh, that's all. That's fine. That's yeah. all. I mean, that makes me feel a little better, I guess. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't the director telling him to do it. He wanted to do it. The director tried to change it, so he couldn't do it. He still did it. I mean, it's better than the director being like, you go do this now. Well, I don't want to do it anyway. Yeah. That's a whole different thing. Ah, Kubrick would have been like, knock your head off then. By all means, please. Kubrick, I'll do it for you. I'll bang your head into the desk yeah. so I can film it. Yeah, just <laughs> do it 20 times. I dare you, you little yeah, bitch. Exactly. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> that's, the, that's the answer. Do it 20 times. <laughs> oh, but ooh, that that was another hard scene. Just the way his hand goes up in the air, and, like moves and like, good, and like, oh, did not like. Great. Me. And this <laughs> is this is the scene where right before that you see his reflection in the classroom cabinet. That's just yes. you know, kind of smiling like I know something you don't know. That's this sly. I don't look at mirrors a whole lot. <laughs> One of my fears. I'm gonna look in a mirror and it's gonna be not. It, it's my, not gonna be Mike. It's gonna be me, but I'm be making a face. I'm not making a face. I'm not okay with that. Fear <laughs> mm. mine. Mike only only approaches mirrors with very stoic looks, like no expression whatsoever. Not, you got to fool me, mirror. They have to have mirrors you can buy that change your mind. No, they don't. They actually don't have to have those. They, you can just not have that technology ever again. I need to buy one of those. No, you don't. You'll have a broken Imagine mirror when that. you come home. Imagine that if all of a sudden t- t- you decide to all of a sudden, you know what? I want a terrified love of my life. I want to just ruin the spirits. Of, I'm just moving out. Like, oh, I gotta go. Bye. Of my betrothed, then you just swap out all the mirrors for these goofy funhouse things. That be the best thing ever. The good thing is, I know you're too lazy to do that, so it's okay. No, I can't do it because it's probably way too expensive. Yeah, it's like a lot of work for for very little pay. It is a lot of work for a little payout because you'd be super upset. No, <laughs> we don't make. We don't want to make Mike upset, which is why we're not going to recommend some of the movies that Ken and I were talking about earlier this morning. Mm-hmm. I want to watch it. You don't. You, you didn't don't. want to watch this. Yes, I did. Not, not when you saw the beheading. You were like, I'm done. I'm done. And I'm like, man, we watched no, all the movies together. And you're like, no, the ones, I'm out. That, the ones that Ken and I discussed today, they, they're, they're ones that you would, you, would, you would nope out of very quickly and be perfectly justified in doing so. Yeah. She wanted me to see Saw X in theater. And I was like, no, no, no. no Saw X was actually really good. Was it good? Yeah. I can't right. do that type of torture stuff, though. So we saw Exorcist in Yes, that was easier. <laughs> so this is when uh, you have the dad goes in the attic because Annie's like, oh, there's a body up there. And this is when he's like, I feel like we skipped a part. Did we skip I don't think part? we, no, he picks her up from, he brings Peter home and somehow they bring Peter upstairs and you're like, how do they bring that kid upstairs? Dead weight. Yeah. And then he goes in the attic. He finds the body. He gets upset. He thinks Annie brought the body up there and Annie's sleepwalking and crazy. And this is when she tries to get him to throw the book in the fire, but he won't throw the book. So she throws the book in the fire and he just lights on. I didn't understand why he lighted on fire for. Because Demon said, ah, I yeah. want this. Yeah. Okay. Demon's like, ha ha, this is what and I'm going to do to you. Point, and it's, only- yeah, it's necessary. Yep. This is and when the movie just goes to like fucking like turns up to, like I said, 11 from this point on. And was anybody else still kind of questioning what was going on, even as, you know, she's saying about there's the body upstairs. He's looking at her like she's insane. A little. You know, yeah. I, I thought well, she wait, brought the body up. At this I point. was cur- I was wondering, I was watching saying, like, I wonder if he's going to go up there and see nothing. Like, is this still yeah. kind of all in her head? Yeah, yeah. that's kind of I thought. I'm like, is, is he going to go up there and be like, yeah, ooh, there's nothing up here crazy. So but the, the second the he. Movie, I was like, is she just imagining most of this? And. I, I don't at, think she imagined Charlie dying. And I, and I, at this point, when you hear him scream, that's when everything for me was like, okay, now okay. this is all real. This is all literal. This is all actually, this is not just a delusion or <laughs> beef stricken anxiety causing crazy things. Nope. Okay. Here we are. That was like the oh. final stamp on it. Maybe it was a little is- late for others, but for me, that's kind of what my final stamp was like. Yeah. Yes. Now let this me. When- let me ask you a question about the body real quick here. Sure. <laughs> what does the family do whenever they come in the front door? In this know, movie? They take their shoes off. They the shoes take off. their shoes off. Tell and me why there are muddy footprints throughout the house throughout the whole movie. 
because the Ooh. cult members are stomping around. I didn't know they are. That. Yeah, they are indeed. I mean, that's they're not. Wow. Crazy, right? They're not. That they don't right. know the rules. They don't know the rules of the house. Yeah. You would so think good. they would want to like hide that yeah. they're there. So. Like, I, I think that the, the, the I think the I residents think of about it. I think the residents of the home have a lot more to worry about than muddy footprints, you know, yeah. and like and also, who the hell is going to believe you? <laughs> right, exactly, yeah. exactly. I still, for most of it, thought it was in Annie's head. Like yeah. when she went to remember when she went to Joan's apartment, I was like, oh no, I thought the apartment was going to be empty. I did too. I saw the sheets and I thought everything was going to be covered in sheets and like she had just imagined the whole encounter with them. Oh, yeah. That would have been cool. <laughs> would have been cool. Yeah, but then it wouldn't have been the whole cult thing they were going for. Well, no, but yeah, then we had still. to figure something else out. Yeah. Good. Then everything we saw was a lie and then what's going on? Oh, but man, when, when Peter wakes up, this is when I just, and I think right away when he wakes up, you can see barely, but you can see his mother in the, on the fucking ceiling. Like, yep. <laughs> oh. uh, like a spider. She is just perched up in that corner in a way that should not be physically possible. No, no it should not. She's fully possessed at this point. Well, she did a lot of things that weren't physically possible. Joints, brings, joints don't bend that way. It <laughs> brings back a lot of, like, I don't know if y'all have seen Split. No, I, I need to see that not, movie, actually. No. There is a character in that movie that moves yeah. like that. That's James McAvoy and Bruce Willis, right? Uh, That's glass bruce willis is in oh okay but split okay split's part of that same trilogy unbreakable and stuff yeah or series whatever the hell yeah okay it did end up being a trilogy but yes okay i know it wasn't supposed to be but yeah okay i do want to see split a lot sorry yeah she's lurking it's really and it's really cool because also and it reminded me how how scary it is when people's bones do things they're not designed to do like when Uh peter's hands in the air and just bends that one way there's something innately terrifying about when Bones bend the way when bones bend in the way they're not designed to bend. It's a very scary, visceral thing. And I, I just shudder. Like, I did not yeah, like this part. Shudder. I did not like when Peter comes downstairs, finds the burned body, and then all of a sudden she just starts chasing after him. And I, I knew it was a trap. Like I knew she was leading right. him to the attic. I'm like, that's where this is going. But this but then, was well. Go ahead. Go sorry. Ahead. No, go ahead. I was gonna say this, we're we're really not capturing though in our conversation is how long it takes to get yeah. from the bed to the hallway, to the door, and you're walking in behind the cameras behind, and it's it's got so much hidden corner vibe to it, like what's around this corner, and it's constantly ramping up this tension, and he sees the door to the, to the uh, I guess the, the grandmother's room was, was yeah. open, right? Oh, I he didn't shuts it, that, but yeah. He shuts it real quick, right? He shuts it real quick. And all this lead in, I don't know how long it literally is. It feels like an hour, but it's probably like two minutes. But the way it just moves and builds and builds this tension, it's like literally like stretching a rubber band tighter and tighter and tighter. Mm-hmm. Almost till it breaks, but it doesn't break because the director is incredible. It's, it's an, it's, it's an, astonishingly good and then the payoff is great you get this really classic and that's why a classic (sighs) oogie boogie boogie here comes the guy creepy thing from the corner comes out that (laughs) works because so much good work has been done to get to that point to get to the point where you are now just on your if you're me like looking through three fingers and going (laughs) and when 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 the camera pans up and you see her perched up there i'm going no 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 I, I was in a moment. I was like, oh, this is this is terrifying. But again, that is just the mark of how much I how much care in is taken getting to the point where a the spooky spooky girl in the corner comes out, that trope <laughs> that had been done a million times before. And I look at it, all right, whatever. The amount of work that was done to get to that point, to make that rubber band so tight, oh, it's just masterful film, filmmaking. This is a, a master class in pacing and oh. When he goes into the attic and she just starts banging her head on the door, I was like, <gasps> nope, nope, yeah, no, like, no, 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 And then I, and she's floating. And she, he doesn't want to know how his mom's pounding on the attic door. I mean, I think just <laughs> being chased by your mother, finding your dad burnt with no head. I mean, that might be the last of your question. Like, how is she doing that scientifically? This doesn't make sense. Yeah, this is now survival. We're in survival mode. All bets are off. All oh, sense God. and rationality is gone. There's no. I yeah. don't care about anything. Nope. Yeah, all sense of rationality is gone. This is just now we're in fight or flight mode at this point. Pretty much. It, it's fucking horrifying. And then 
I think when he goes in, he goes in the attic, and this is when you see somehow doesn't Annie come up into the attic or and starts cutting off her head? First. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. I was waiting for it. Yeah. First you see the weird blonde guy from the funeral. Okay. I thought yeah, I thought I saw a naked guy in the corner. I was like, what the fuck is this? Naked yep. lots of naked <laughs> Ari Aster here establishing his naked old people trope that he brought again in Midsummer. Mm-hmm. And you start to see some people, and then you hear a sound. It sounds icky. It sounds unfortunate. And Peter doesn't know what it is, and then he looks up, and then he sees Annie just floating in midair, sawing at her neck with a piece of piano wire, looking down at him entire with time. the most terrified, terrifying face in this entire movie. I have never forgotten the look on Annie's face as she's cutting off her own head. Mm. Yeah, just nope, 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 nope. It's like this glaring, like she's glaring, right? Like, yeah, like, like just, she's just, doing this, it's evil intent. You there know? is nothing but hatred in her yes. eyes. Yeah, she's just, yes. Ugh. I'm assuming that's the demon, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, the yeah. demon possessed Annie immediately after Peter lit on fire, and you see the moment. Yeah, okay. where she's just she like snaps, like yeah, screaming, and then she's just like, Ugh. yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's so fucking horrifying, doesn't he? And I think this is when Peter jumps off the roof. Yeah, this is when he window. does the smartest thing and just nopes right the fuck out, just eats <laughs> himself out the window. And I guess it's supposed to be a he died at this point, is what the YouTube said that I watched. I mean, it's only what two and a half. Flights. Yeah, it's not that high. I mean, it, have, it might have broken a bone. But well, it depends it if you if you land your head right, it would break your neck. But either way, Peter is defenseless, and this is where payment gets in. Yeah. Okay. But it doesn't matter because he's not going to live. No, it doesn't matter. No. <laughs> and I remember I put in my notes. You see three naked bodies in the in the in the woods, looking at him, watching him as he's walking to the treehouse. Yep. More cultists. They're not the important ones, though. The important ones are up in the treehouse. Tree yeah, and you watch Annie's headless body float into the treehouse. I'm like, well, this is not fun. <laughs> nope. And this is, yeah, all of this stuff is nope. I am now in full note mode as we are as we are hurtling towards the end of this movie. And I, the one thing that really caught me is because you don't see her head fall, but you surely hear it as yeah, the camera I... is as the camera is descending from the house from the treehouse, and you hear. Dun, Yes, it's that like, sound, that exact sound, sound whatever that was, whatever made, whoever made that sound on a desk was exactly the sound <laughs> you heard. I, I hope the audience heard that too. I'm sure it's on a recording. But yes, whoever heard, made what sound? I didn't hear anything. Oh, you didn't hear anything. That was just the, the, the person behind me, the, the creature. Oh, there it is. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, the, that sound of a body hitting the floor, like that hollow sound of body hitting wooden floor. Oh, yeah. So it's, good. Mm-mm. Man, when he gets in the treehouse and you just see a bunch of naked people all there, and all of a sudden I notice the two headless bodies of his mother and grandmother, I'm like, ah. mm-hmm. <laughs> and is that Charlie's head on the yeah. deep yes. on the statue? Yes. That's yes. what I thought. I yeah, tell they, it first. Yeah, they, they put the crown on, and then they put the crown on Peter's head or Paymon's head. Mm-hmm. But they see, even in horror, head. though, you have to have your rule oh, yeah. of three. That is three dismembered heads now, mm-hmm. <laughs> and three female dismembered heads too. Yep, rule of three, people. Yep, everything's better in threes. Yeah, because I think they say Charlie's and yeah, they they think Charlie's and Peter's body, but at the same point, and they say hail Paymon. So yes, yes, because Paymon is now in his preferred body, and the quote that what's her face says, um, Joan says, God, what was it? We've corrected your first female body and give you now this healthy male host. Oh Jesus Christ! That is the moment when I was like. These motherfuckers have been behind this entire movie. Nobody has done anything on their own. They've all been pushed to this. Yeah. Well, Everything's been pushed. Yep. You remember when um, Annie was like, she wouldn't even let me feed you. And like the whole time she was like, probably feeding well, she's, her. That's when the dioramas where she's breastfeeding Charlie, which is not weird at all. Uh-huh. Well, okay, so I, I'm not going to lie. I saw this in the YouTube video. But if you look at the picture of the grandma holding Charlie as a baby, she's feeding her a bottle. If you look super close, there's green stuff on the bottom of the bottle. And it's the same stuff that Annie picks out of her mouth when she's having tea with Joan. Get oh. out of here. Yeah. 
Ooh. No. Okay. I gotta watch I, YouTube more. I know, right? Hey, it helps. See, Not the one that's I cool. Watch. I mentioned that's it, cool, though. That's actually really. That was a joke. I'm down. That's really cool. So oh. she had pretty much been prepping her since she was a newborn. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh man! And then I guess saying the last thing Joan is like, or your, you know, where your servants. I mean, it, the whole idea was that Paymon would then benefit them, but I guess they missed the part when he's a demon, and the idea of a demon doing anything to help you—I don't think it's how this works. I disagree. So, oh. <laughs> I—they're basically his followers. Like I—I I got the quote right here. We reject the Trinity and pray devoutly to you, great payment. Give us your knowledge of all secret things. Bring us honor, wealth, and good familiars. Bind all men to our will as we have bound ourselves for now and ever to yours. So, okay. like, they, they're his ride or die. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> his ride or die. All right. Wow. Yeah, it's just, and it's, and uh, yeah, and that's how, it, how that, that's how the movie concludes. And, and I want to drool off my chin and go, oh, damn, okay, is, it's 1130. Can I stay for another two hours and watch this again? Because I really feel like I need to. <laughs> but I did not. I uh, I went home. I went and uh, did some dishes. And then, just to kind of cap this off with something lighthearted. Remember how I was talking about, I think it was during the Nightmare before Nightmare on Elm Street show. I was talking about the the being done with the movie for the, for the podcast and then going to bed and then seeing the creepy hand, the goofy thing yes, my wife yes. thought. Same thing happened last night. I go after my movie, after the screening. I go into this little closet. We call it the cave. It's like a little like a alcove. We put like boxes and stuff. And there, therein was a box a bag of like bag chips. Because, you know, after you see a horrible movie of beheadings and grief and sadness, a little Doritos is exactly what you need before you go to sleep. So I go there to get, get, my, get, my, get my snack. And my wife never put up that creepy ghost thing that was sitting <laughs> in the cave. So all I see is his hand like sticking out by like where the, the, the potato chips are. And it's scary. I, I put that hand down just like I did. <laughs> like Marin Elm Street. I'm like, I'm I'm gonna wake up and gonna see you, and that's gonna really terrify me. So uh this movie did its job. It made me concerned. But God, this is so good. Concerned. This is this is so ridiculously good. Um I'm very glad I really wish I had the Ken experience and saw this in the theater. I was texting my brother and he saw this theatrically too. Yeah, he and he he was basically saying, Oh, he's I saw it in theaters, he very similar story to, to Ken. People losing their minds. Great communal experience. <laughs> yes. I mean, it really was. So is Midsummer. I know. <laughs> I don't know if I could ever watch this in theaters. I might have had to leave. <laughs> well, it's, I can tell you I would have been gone. I'd be like, oh, where's the door? I'm out here. I'm done. <laughs> no, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have left. Come back. Don't leave me. I will, no. Yeah, it's, it's just when you're... Uh, two things, again, horror and comedy always works best in a group. It really does. Because... Uh, it's that sense of surprise and yeah. everyone being surprised together. It's different. You can watch a comedy by yourself and laugh and you can watch a horror movie by yourself and be terrified, but something being around a bunch of people doing the same thing, it just hits different than like a drama or anything else. Yeah, it's like a campfire. It's like the old campfire stories, right? They're, they're creepy because you tell them with friends around a campfire, you know? Exactly. Yeah. I think I want to have to go start seeing horror movies by myself in the theater. Somebody won't go with you. No, you're right. Someone will not go with you. <laughs> you are 100% correct. I wish you guys lived closer. <laughs> we could all go as a group together. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't be involved in any of the movie. But... <laughs> all right, we should go to Shelf Stacker Box. And Tiffany, why don't you go first? So I was going to put it in the box. But after doing this, um, I think I'm going to put it in the stack because it creeped me the fuck out. I, and I don't... You didn't change my mind enough to put it on the shelf. I'll put it in the stack. Maybe I'll, you know, if I want to be creeped out or if I want to look at it more, I'll take it out. But it's not going on the shelf. I, I'll be content. Okay. For it to go on the stack. And Bill? Uh, this is going to go, oh, on the shelf. Of course it's going on the shelf. Why was I, <laughs> why was I even, why was I even, like, I pausing? Was like... <laughs> I, why I thought was it was for dramatic dream? effect. Yeah, I really was. And I think my brain just turned off for a second. I was possessed for a few moments. Sorry. <laughs> I go back there. Go, Pi- Paimon, go back back there. It's not your turn yet. No, this is on the shelf. This is exceptional. This is, I don't want to say it's the beginning, probably, but this is, like, one of those, the art horror movement, I guess. It's kind of, we're kind of in the middle of now, right, Ken? You would, is that what they call it? Like art house horror? Elevated that horror That's is... the that's the term, right? I hate that term. It's I, terrible. I That's not it. a good term. It's not a good term. But yeah, we're in this like this era of prestige horror, right? And this is kind of one of these tentpole movies of that you know, with the witch and Midsummer and all that. 
And this is terrifying and deep and dense. And honestly, even if it didn't have all of the supernatural leanings and all the possessions and demons, just as a portrait of what grief can do to a family and to people, yeah. it's it's stunning. And when Ari Aster first uh, pitched this movie, he didn't mention it was a horror movie. He said it was going to be a movie about grief and about family. He didn't even mention it was going to be a horror movie because the core of this movie is the horror of grief, right? And that, and this is all that oh, just steeped in that. And the result is this really exceptionally made, beautifully shot, extraordinarily scored, wonderfully acted. Pick an adjective, pick an adverb. Um, yeah, this is going on my shelf so much so that a I really wish I had still had the rental active on YouTube. So I probably would watch it again as soon as we hang up this call. And B, I want to leave a little seed of something in my box of Blu-rays that my curious son one day be flicking on through. Huh? Christmas story. Huh? Princess Bride. Hereditary. Well, hmm, this looks this looks weird. Pop it into a Blu-ray player and experience something terrifying and moving on his own. And that would be like a little hidden gift just for you. William, I'm not trying to destroy you as a human being. I hope you see this when you're of age. So you're not completely <laughs> scarred. I want you to see this when you're old enough to appreciate it and really be terrified by it. And then let <laughs> daddy know because you and dad are going to go someplace. We're going to have a chat about hereditary. That is that. Ken, what about you? I think it's pretty obvious. It's it going on my shelf. This was actually the first 4K Blu-ray that I purchased ever. Um, the only reason I did it was because all the Blu-ray versions were sold out because this movie was a capital T thing. Oh, yes. But, um, you know, I watched it. Like I said, I've probably watched this a couple dozen times. I own a digital. I own it on disc. It's not in theater. I love this movie. And it's a movie that does reward repeat viewings. Because you notice things like the footprints where Charlie is walking on the trail. You notice that some of the shots looking from outside the house in, you see smoky, like cold breath in the shots from the cultists that are outside watching this happen. Oh, You, you notice all of these things on repeat viewings. And you notice somebody who, wait a minute, who's that that Annie's walking past going into the craft store? That kind of looks like Danny and Christian. Same actors? Hmm. Kind of looks like. Ah. Hmm. Okay, that's kind of cool. That That is a very fan favorite theory that this all takes place right around the same area. So it's just a really bad section of the world where everything is going wrong. Okay, That's comforting. <laughs> <laughs> all right, and I'll go last. I think it's obvious this is going to the box. I did Aww. enjoy. I mean, it's a good movie, but I not my. It's not a Mike movie, and I do not need to see this movie ever again. But it did hit. It was chilling. It was woo. So it was going in the box. But I'm glad that we watched it. I'm glad that this won the poll, which I forgot to even say in the beginning of the episode. This won the Patreon poll. Congrats, <laughs> guys. <laughs> we forgot about that part. But yeah, no, I'm glad we finally saw it. You know, even if I don't ever need to see it again. But I do have to ask Ken. Have you seen the other movie he did after this? Bew is afraid. Nope. Okay. I have not. Neither I. I'm curious about it now, unfortunately. Mm. I don't know if that's a good thing or not, but I am yeah. curious. I, I got to tell you, I yeah. did watch the trailer for that one and it didn't do anything for me. It's exactly the same. I saw it. I was like, oh, all right. I don't know. I think I may at some point, but there's a lot of media I need to ingest. But he, this is the kind of director that I, I'll go on that limb. You know, I'll be like, you know, I am going to dedicate some time. because I And I also really like Joaquin Phoenix. So same. there's a lot. there's a lot going for this. Uh, I don't know, one day maybe, but I'm not in a super rush. Yeah. Okay. I have, however, seen his short film, There's Something About the Johnsons. I have not seen it. I have it queued up right here on ye old YouTube to start firing <laughs> up the second we stop talking. So, uh, uh, yeah. Do me a favor. Mm. Let me the know what you thought. I will. I will. I'll see you in a half an hour because <laughs> I yeah. think it's a half an hour long. Because <laughs> um, that's something. The thing, huh? All right. Fantastic. Oh, that's something. Watch it every time someone says, do me a favor, and my brain goes, let him in. Someone knocking on the door. Someone's ringing a bell. I have one in my head. Paul McCartney song. No. <laughs> one could make the argument that Paul McCartney's written more bad songs than he has good. <laughs> I am fair, just <laughs> but there's so many good ones. So <laughs> oh, all right, I think that's, 
<laughs> uh, Bill, where can people find you at? Oh, I do a delightful uh, podcast that has nothing to do with the occult at all, or beheadings, or ants, <laughs> called A Gamer Looks at 40. And uh, it's just a nostalgia-dripped episode, podcast series about people's stories of video games and how they've connected with those games over the years. Big old nostalgia fest. You've heard this pitch a hundred times yep. if you're a faithful listener to the show. Here's the hundred and first. Go to Twitter slash X slash Muskland and uh, go to a gamer looks at 440. That's where I do most of the uh, social media posting. And uh, this coming, I don't know when this is posting, but uh, this week, Thursday, like Thursday. Thursday. Oh, yeah, cool. Kind of running in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, if you, if you, if you need, if you need after this depressing discussion about a depressing, sad movie, well, I'm sure this, the discussion wasn't depressing. I, my most recent episode is going to be about an interview with one of the executive producers of the original EA NHL series. Uh, Richard Hilleman. He was very responsible for a lot of the programming of Madden and NHL. And we talk about the old days of EA and how the NHL series was first built, the systems behind it, the, pop, the produce, production, the promotion. It's a really fun interview um, about a beloved game series, a beloved game for me. It's like a top five game of all time for me. So, um, yeah, a game looks at 40 wherever your ears listen to podcasts. Okay. And if you enjoyed this episode, there's over 500 other episodes on Podbean. You go find our giant catalog of we do movies, TV, comics, whatever stuff people convince me to do. Did you say five? Over 500. Sounds no, you said five. Five. Oh, you said five. Over five, too. There are <laughs> we have, five. We have at least six. That's we have technically at least minimum. <laughs> I mean, getting close to 600, to be honest with you. So. <laughs> At least 10. You should go check those out too. There are more than a dozen episodes on Podbean. (laughs) At least the Baker's dozen. So go ahead out there and, like, just real quick before you finish your your, your (sighs) spiel. Uh, When does, at what number does this podcast become an obsession as opposed to just a show? I think that's already cast. You're, I don't know, your angle is his 600 episodes. That is like, that's huge. And that's not a, I'm just, Will you be like the I am? This is the two thousandth episode of Games My Mom. I mean, if I can, I can I'll totally keep this going. I, I would love totally, doing this. I know you love doing it. It's amazing. Now, Tiff, will you allow him to get to episode two thousand? True statement. You have to get to episode a thousand. You have to. That's that's the that's the mark for me. After okay. that, I think it's a good goal. I want someday for people to be like, I want to meet Mike Alberton. <laughs> I do too, but I don't know if that day is going to come. But I yeah. want people. I want people to meet Mike Alberton. I want to meet Mike Alberton. <laughs> you will one day. I'm someday. gonna. I'm gonna come down to Texas at some point. <laughs> Excellent. I want to someday be at our local Comic Con. That's my goal. Yeah, we should be at Comic Con. Ken, you can come too. Oh, thanks. Let, let them stand in line for autographs for three hours and pay $1,000 for said autograph. And then you it and doesn't I... normally happen. I'm actually going to a convention in a couple of weeks, <laughs> but I will not be spending nearly the amount of money I spent, hopefully. But And it will not be two hour long lines. I can guarantee that. I'm oh, seeing. Oh, my God. It will not be a two hour line for Tony Todd, okay? He, oh, he ain't going to get that many people. Goes, Are you out of your damn mind? What? There's going to be so many people for Tony Todd. No, there won't. Well, Minnesota, not to the amount there was for Freddy Krueger, okay? The Robert England line was... It, Minnesota doesn't draw the crowd, apparently, like Boston did. <laughs> I, don't know I will send you a picture. This of is why a lot of people cancel our con. Like, Lou Frigno canceled, like, twice. And what's his name? John Glover. John Glover's canceled, like, three times. Well, I don't know Luther. Oh, I want to see John Glover. But yeah, no, usually they're not that bad. Like I, the convention I'm going to, I'll probably end up waiting in line like five minutes if I have to wait in line to get. Yeah, it won't be bad. I'm getting Tony Todd on that poster, even though he's not on that poster. There's no Candyman on that poster. I don't care. He's going to be honorary bad guy. <laughs> Here we go. Convention talk again for convention. We haven't even gone to yet. Sorry. Flip it. will be. People, that's what people enjoy the show. People, hey, somebody commented Discord and said, Mike, the best thing about that Nightmare on Elm Street was me talking about gas. So, hey, <laughs> that's why you're here, okay, folks? Uh, at least that's why one person's here. <laughs> <laughs> to hear what dumb shit Mike's going to say today, because you just never know, because I don't even know. The five episodes. That five, just five, just five episodes. Just five. All right, so yeah, go find everything on Podbean, because not everything is on iTunes or Apple. Just search, search bar. You never know what you're going to find. We do horror movies. We do, yeah, because people keep convincing me to, so. Type in Star Wars. There's tons of that. Type in Reanimator. There's an episode for that for some reason. So go check all that out. If you want to support the show, we do a Patreon. Little star, you vote in the Patreon poll. And that's how this episode ended up on the show. So go do that. Go vote and help make things happen in the show. All right. And if and we also have a Discord, please join our Discord. We want to give a shout out to my awesome intro and outro, courtesy of Helena at Helena Hathfear. You can follow her on TikTok. You'll see a link in the show notes to all her link tree stuff. So definitely go follow her. And 
I want to give a shout out to Nomads of Fantasy. Definitely go check out that podcast. I think that's everything I need to say. So we will see you guys all next time. Wait, no, I forgot. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Threads, Blue Sky, YouTube. Yes, we are on Threads. That's everything I need to say. Now, we will see you guys all next time. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. So long.